here we go. You know, one day I'm going to wind up hitting the right button and things are just going to work out the right way. Thanks so much for being here. My name is Tom Rigsby. This is seven minutes in the morning where we talk about all manner of things to have to help you have a happy, healthy, balanced life while you're building your business. Good morning to you, Joe. I'm glad to see that you are here this morning. This week we have been talking about winning and today. I'm going to try and wrap up a few thoughts on uh, on that topic. <coughs> but before I do that, if you happen to be listening on your favorite podcast catcher, tune in Instagram, not Instagram, tune in uh, iTunes, Stitcher, or the like. Maybe you're watching on YouTube. Uh, be sure and come to, before you end the day today, be sure and head over to 7minutesinthemorning.com. Join us on the Facebook page so you can drop a comment in there and get your uh, name, get your shout out, and get your welcome, like Jessica, Keith, Joe, and I should have done this morning. All right, so, um, oh, and one other thing, not for me, do this for your for your network. If you find value in the conversations that we have here every morning, Share this video with your network. They will ascribe all of the value back to you. All right. So this week we've been talking about winning. And, you know, more than anything else, what I want you to take away from this week and this conversation about winning, <laughs> it's going to sound funny, but but just run with me for a minute. What I want you to take away from this is that it's okay to win. We've, we've created, we've created this context where it, it's, it feels bad to win. <laughs> There's a great line. I think it was, uh, meet the parents or meet the fuckers. One, one of those, one of those, the movies in that series, but he, you know, he had a ribbon on the wall for eighth place and something when he was, you know, a kid and, and the other dad said, I didn't even know they made ribbons for eighth place. This whole idea that, you know, everybody's a winner and we, we reinforce it all the time or that, that everybody's a winner. If everybody's a winner, then nobody's a winner, right? It is okay to win. Now, earlier this week, I did tell you that, that comparison, competition, trying to be the best instead of being great is not the best way, not the right way to approach that. Try to be better than you were yesterday. Be the best version of yourself that you can be, right? But at the end of the day, winning is what this, this game that we're playing is about. What happens if you don't win? At, I mean, worst case, what happens if you don't win? I, I guess it could be a tie. But this is a binary result. You either win or you lose. Right? And I, I know I'm beating this example to death, but it's the best one I've got. Baseball, 162 games. They can lose. The best team in baseball right now has lost almost 50% of their games. Right? I don't know what that says about baseball. But it does say <laughs> that you don't have to win every time. Right? That sometimes you're not going to get the result that you were hoping for. And that's okay. Right? But you have to put together more wins than losses. Now, why do we want to do that? Right? Because winning is moving toward the result that we have set, the outcome that we have established as our goal. Now, I call it winning and very specifically use that language because that does something special in our brain, right? When we win, we get this little shot of dopamine and dopamine makes us want to do it again. But here's what we've done, right? We've robbed ourselves of that, that experience. We don't know how to, so I was watching a, a, a nun, um, I wish I could remember. It might've been Jordan Peterson, but at any rate, we were watching, I was watching another video yesterday studying their message and, 
And the point that they were making was we've robbed ourselves. We don't even know how to celebrate. I mean, when you're looking at your desk, right? when you go to work, you look at your desk, it probably looks really similar at the end of the day than it did at the beginning of the day. What's your measure of success? Well, I'm cutting the grass. My measure of success, I know whether I'm winning or not. If the the amount left to cut's getting smaller, right? That's why that oh, it was Mike Rowe. That's who was talking about this. That's why that's such a rewarding thing to do. That's why working with our hands is such a rewarding thing to do, right? But as we have moved what we do into the virtual realm, it's much more difficult to keep track of that. That's why we have to create these milestones for ourselves, right? Create these milestones for ourselves. Look, if you get to, well, it's a dangerous one, but just work with me on this one. If you get to inbox zero every day, are you winning? Maybe. I mean, if all of those emails are orders, yeah, maybe. If they're customer support needs, okay, maybe. But if it's just junk mail, there's a much easier, faster, more efficient way to get to, to empty your inbox. Just select all and delete. If it's important, it'll come back. Right? Make sure you're measuring the right things. And when you, when you reach that finish line, when you create that victory, celebrate it. Because if you don't celebrate it, then your mind can't help you recreate that. You'll lose the drive to do it. And then you'll just be, you know, just what it is, a mindless drone dragging your laptop into work to sit there and click through email all day or whatever it is that you do. Set those goals, even if it's making phone calls. All right, here's my goal today to make 24 phone calls. All right, that's three an hour. Put the scoreboard up and start ticking them off. Right? Right? Figure out a way to measure your progress toward your goal, toward toward your definition of success. Track it, and then when you get there, celebrate. I don't care. I'm go get an ice cream sandwich. Whatever it, it, it means to you to celebrate, but celebrate it. And don't and and make it something valuable. Don't make it something that's well. I didn't really need an ice cream sandwich anyway, so you know, that, that's okay. No, no. Celebrate. Call up friends. Share your victories. Right? I hope I haven't overemphasized that. <laughs> but it it is. It's super important to do that. Uh, yes, I should be a better version of yourself. Absolutely. All right. And I want to share this with you, too. I had, uh, this is an awesome... Ooh, move over here. Don't let the fear of losing be greater than the excitement of winning. That's absolutely another reason to celebrate. Right? That excitement of winning. We create anticipation toward a result. That anticipation of the result is what pulls us toward that result. But if we let, if we allow the fear of losing to overcome that excitement. Look, I gave this talk yesterday. Uh, at breakfast. And I'll put that back up in just a minute, but I want to get back over here in the middle. If w What you can visualize in your mind is just as real as something you physically experience. Think about how your brain works for a minute, okay? Even, even if you don't understand any of the biology, I can make it really simple for you, all right? When you take a hammer and smash your thumb, it hurts, right? And that pain, that experience is encoded chemically and electrically in your brain, right? So now the next time you pick up a hammer, you tuck your thumb in, right? That's what we do. If I can sit here and visualize a result, right? Roger Bannister, we talked about him earlier uh, this week. Was it this week, Keith? I think we talked about him this week. But he, before he did it, no one had run a mile in four minutes or less. But he visualized, he would sit down, close his eyes, and visualize himself crossing the finish line with the clock reading 3 minutes, 59 seconds. And what did he do? 
he was able to break the four minute mile. And then after he did it, everybody started doing it. Why? Right? He was able to visualize something that was possible. He believed it was possible. And that memory was chemically and electrically encoded in his brain. So now he could pull that back. When you're thinking about winning and the anticipation of winning, the excitement of winning, as Robert Kiyosaki says, close your eyes, visualize that. Let's just say it's an ice cream sandwich. How does it smell? How does it taste? It's cold in your hand. All of those things matter. So spend time visualizing yourself in that victory state, and that's going to pull you toward that state. All right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Boy, Keith, you hit the nail on the head. We have been brainwashed to believe that it's better, it's better to take part than it is to win. You know, I, I'm, I'm, I don't even know how long I've been talking. Woo, way too long. I got to wrap it up. But here's the point on that topic. I could go off on this much longer. It is just as important to learn how to lose and how to keep going. Right? Winston Churchill said, when you're going through hell, keep going. <laughs> don't stop. Right? It's just as important to learn how to lose and keep going. I didn't walk around, <clears throat> you know, follow around my, my toddlers, either my kids or grandkids and catch them before they fell when they were learning to walk. I wanted them, I wanted their butt to hit the floor and let them learn that number one, it's okay. And number two, get up. But if you don't ever let them fall, then they don't ever experience that. And then what happens when you're not there? Right? Anyway, win. Plan to win. Expect to win. Visualize winning. Winning much better than losing. Thank you all so much for putting up with that rant today. I hope, my, my sincere desire is that that has helped you visualize wanting to win. If you like that, give it a thumbs up. Give it a like. Subscribe if you're on YouTube. All of those things are appreciated. Um, yeah, Joe mentioned if you are in the Huntsville area, we would love to have you join your guy. We would love to have you join us today at the Mob 1130 at Terra Nova's, right off of University Drive. If you need more information about that, send Joe or send me a message. Uh, great group of guys. We get together first Friday of every month to talk about all things business. Uh, and I think we might... I don't know, somehow get off on the winning topic today. But I don't know. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> you guys have a great weekend. I'll be back here Monday morning with another brand new installment of 7 Minutes in the Morning. Until then, you guys take care. Oops, wrong button again. You know, I really have to get this whole button thing figured out. Maybe I just need to label them. I don't know. <laughs>